video, we will be discussing dealing with grief. Instead of grief dealing with us like it is prone to do, how exactly can we deal with it? Grief is defined as pain of mind, arising from misfortune, significant personal loss, or bereavement. Grief is an inevitable part of life. You will lose somebody or lose something, and the heartache that you feel at the loss is called grief. Grief can happen when you lose a loved one, a parent, a spouse, a child. Grief can happen when you lose a career or a dream as a result of personal injury. For instance, a ballerina that can't dance any longer because of a shattered limb. For instance, a student in medical school with hopes of being a surgeon, but gets into an accident and loses one of his arms. Grief happens in the case of sexual abuse and rape. Grief happens as a result of a miscarriage or even the unexpected loss of a marriage that ends in divorce. Grief affects us all. And if you have not lost someone yet, keep living. You certainly will. It is painful and it will destabilize you for a good long while. Research shows that it takes between six to 10 years to get over the loss of a child. It is a painful, painful loss. I remember when I lost my mom in the year 2015. I did not lose her suddenly. I started to lose her in 2009 when she had a stroke. I lost her in stages and that is a different kind of grief entirely. Death is never easy. However, when you lose a loved one in stages, it is so painful to witness. It is very, very painful. When your strong and capable loved one is now as weak as a baby and no longer a source of help and encouragement to you, it shatters something deep within you. That still did not stop me from grieving when I received the sudden news of her death. I cried all day, and when I woke up the next day, my eyes were swollen and puffed up. I had never looked like that in my life. I was shocked when I stood in front of the mirror and looked at my eyes and said, wow, who is this person? Well, that was a person who had just lost her mother to death. Her anchor, the one she had looked to, to guide her and teach her so many things in life, was no more. The condolences started coming in and I tried to be strong, but the kindness of people were triggers that led me to cry all over again. I remember going to the passport office in order to renew my passport so I could travel back home to Nigeria for her burial. At the passport office, someone took a look at me and knew just by looking at me that I was my mother's daughter because I looked so much like her. She then started to talk about how my parents were instrumental in her life and were such a great help to her. Then she innocently asked me, how's your mom doing? Now I am someone that does not like drawing attention to myself in any way. So to my great embarrassment, right there in the passport office, I started weeping and it's, it wasn't, I wasn't crying quietly. It was loud and I was a blubbering mess. I told her, I said, that's why I'm here. I need to renew my passport so I can go home and bury my mom. Now that woman was just asking an innocent question, but that was a trigger to my grief. There will be triggers to your grief, no matter how much you try to pull yourself together and try and make yourself be okay. That loss is forever a part of you. Grief it holds you tighter when you put on a brave face and try your best to let go of it. There are various triggers that will take you back to that moment of loss. You can be watching a movie. It can be a conversation. It can be the memories of that person who you love so much, but who is now no more. So the first thing I will tell you about grief and how to handle grief, embrace your grief. 
Don't try to run away from it. Don't pretend you are fine. Don't despise or hate your grief. You have experienced a devastating loss, so allow yourself to process it. Cry as long as you need to cry for. Don't let anyone shut you up about crying. Cry it out. Let that pain out. Find a way to talk about it. Share your hurt with those who love you because those who love you want the best for you. And they will listen. They will comfort you. They will encourage you. They will be there for you. Get a journal that is self-therapy. Write out how you feel. And do you know who you need to tell how you feel? God. Number two, how can you deal with grief? Run to God. God is the only one that has the power to heal you and make you feel fine again. A lot of us get angry and turn away from God because of who we have lost or what we have lost. The irony is the only one that can make you feel better, the only one that can truly get you through the hurt and pain is God. So don't run away from God, run to him. Let him know how you feel. Take your pain to him. He is the only one who truly understands and knows exactly where it hurts and how it hurts. He will give you peace when you surrender your grief to him. It is a peace that passes all understanding. You see, grief makes you look at what you have lost. You have to adjust to a new reality. No matter how you don't like it or how you don't want it, things will never be the same again. But you must go on living. Things will never be normal again. You are now in a new normal. There is also something called survivor's remorse. For instance, being in an accident where everyone died except you. It brings a lot of guilt and despair. It brings about the why me question. God, why did you not let me die too? There is a purpose to your pain. There is a reason why you survived while others died. And God is the one that will show you the way forward. That's why you cannot run from God in your grief. You must run to him. He's the one that will make sense out of all your pain. A lot of us are unable to function because we don't talk about our pain. We keep it bottled up inside and so we remain heart sick. It invites misery, bitterness, and resentment. If you need to go to therapy, please do so. The pain is relieved when you share it in a safe and loving place. Your life does not end because you lost a loved one or something precious to you. You are a survivor. So get up and live. God is there to help you and lift you up. You have a community of believers who will love you and hold your hand through it. So do not isolate yourself in your pain. Please do not. Because it is harder to get through when you keep it all inside. There are people in the Bible who experience devastating losses, yet they had to keep on living. Life must go on despite grief and loss. Jacob lost his beloved wife, Rachel. He lost his son, Joseph, for many years thinking that Joseph was dead. Joseph lost his freedom and went from favored son to slave boy for many years. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were captives in Babylon. They lost their freedom, but yet they still had to function. They still had to live, and God created a new reality for them. Job lost his family, his wealth, and his health. David lost songs of his. Naomi lost her husband and her two sons, and for a while, God himself lost his only son, Jesus to the cold hands of death. God knows exactly how you feel. God is a restorer. God is a healer. He can heal you. He can turn your life around if you can just 
let him. Many of us are searching for purpose in our lives. The truth is pain is part of what will point you to your purpose. In your suffering, you will develop compassion and the character of Christ will be chiseled out of you. When you place your grief in God's hands, you will relearn some things. You will develop a fresh perspective on things that you thought you understood. God will comfort you and will raise you to be a comfort to others. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God loves you so much, and if you lean on him, he will get you through the toughest and darkest moments of your life. I recommend the book of Psalms if you are struggling with grief. King David laid out all his emotions in this book of the Bible. You are not alone. What you feel has been felt before, and God will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death and you will come through it strong and alive with a renewed sense of purpose. If you have lost a hope or a dream, there is more to you than that. You are still of use to God and to the world at large. God will show you a new way that you can function. Losing a career is not the end of the world. You can function in another career or path and God will show you how to. You see, to understand your purpose, to understand your life, and to make sense of it all, you must have a close relationship with your Creator. God is the one that will help you understand how life is for you. So you must draw close to Him to make sense of your life and to navigate this life until your life is over and you spend all eternity with him, where there is no more pain, no more sickness, no more tears, no more sadness. That is the goal of every child of God, to make it into heaven and to live with God forevermore. Grief makes you face the reality not to waste the time that you have left, because you too one day will pass away. But as a child of God, living in obedience to him, you know that just as Christ rose from the dead and lives forever, so it shall be for you. Let's make good use of the time that we have left and live purposefully all to God's glory. And if you know anyone who is grieving right now, love them through it. Listen to them and pray for them. No matter how many times they want to talk about your pain, don't get tired of listening because in sharing this with you, they are releasing all that pain that is within them. Be there for them and encourage them. The Bible says weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. I pray for anyone suffering from grief right now that God visits you and embraces you, that God comforts you and strengthens you in the name of Jesus. Receive his love his strength, and his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. If this video has been a blessing to you, hit the like button, stay subscribed, and share. God loves you, and I love you. God bless you.